But never give up, no giving, even when success seems out of sight. The patient ones turn to him, hoping that he will be healed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala al-mab'uthi rahmatu lil alameen. نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Generosity is not a theoretical thing It is something that we must practice in order for us to be perfect believers It is one of the branches of belief that in order to be a true practice and believer you have to fulfill them the companions of the Prophet ﷺ knew this and they went out of their way not to give when they were rich only but also to give when they were in desperate need. They used to be so generous that they would prefer strangers to themselves. It was reported in the authentic hadith that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ from out of Medina and he requested the Prophet ﷺ to give him food and shelter. So the Prophet sent ﷺ to his wives, send me food if you have any. And all of his wives replied by saying that we do not have food ourselves. So the Prophet said ﷺ to those who were around him, to his companions, who would take my guest to be his own so Abu Talha al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I will take him, O Prophet of Allah. And Abu Talha took his guest to his house. And he spoke to his wife, Umm Sulaym, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, the blessed family of companions of the Prophet And he said, Umm Sulaym, do you have anything for us to eat? So she said that, by Allah, I have only my children's food this is their only meal so Abu Talha said well give them something give them water give them anything that would make them fall asleep and then give us their food so she put them to bed and they slept and she brought the food and she put it in front of the guest pretending to be eating with him the food was so little but they wanted the guest to eat and she turned the light down so that he would not see that they were not eating and they pretended to be eating in the dark until the guest ate all the food when they went to the Prophet ﷺ the following morning and offered Fajr prayer with him the Prophet told them the glad tidings that Allah approved what they had done that night this is the form of generosity we are referring to. Not what we see today, someone having millions and millions and gives a thousand or two in the cause of Allah and thinking that he had done something that no one else had ever done. This is not the generosity we are referring to. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, was not a great warrior of Islam like Umar and Ali. He was a great caliph and he was someone that the Prophet loved وسلم, to the extent that he gave him two of his own daughters in marriage. When the first one died, he married him the second one. He was not one of the greatest fighters of Islam, but he was one of the most generous people of all. And that is why he bought the well of Ruma, which was controlled by a Jew, depriving people, depriving Muslims from drinking from it. He gave it all to the Muslims. He did not keep anything for himself. He also managed to sponsor the army that went to Ghazwat Tabuk. And he gave a hundred of camels with all that is needed for it in terms of saddles, of food, of water. It's fully equipped for the cause of Allah. And the Prophet said, who would give for the cause of Allah. So he said, another hundred, O Prophet of Allah, on me. 
And the Prophet encouraged who would give for the sake of Allah. He said, another hundred, O Prophet of Allah, on me. And then the Prophet said, alayhi salatu salam, it would not harm Uthman, whatever he does after today. Allah will forgive whatever he does. May Allah be pleased with him. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, as well, one of the rich companions of the Prophet والسلام, gave a lot of his wealth for the cause of Allah. They had this wealth in their hands and not in their hearts. That's why it was easy for them to give it away. We have our wealth in our hearts. And that is why when we spend something, we feel like having a heart attack. Even if it was negligible, even if it was so little, yet we feel that we are having a stroke every time we spend. Why? Because we depend on ourselves. We think and believe that we are doing what we're doing and the money we're gathering, it is all by our own power and knowledge, not from Allah the Almighty. Islam encourages us to spend. And we have to know that Allah wants us to spend money, but not to humiliate ourselves. If you compare the doing of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, when he gave all of his money for the sake of Allah, one would think that this is insane. What will you do? You will leave your children hungry. You will leave your house unattended. You will not have any money to pay for your needs and the things that make you live in an honorable life. The question would be posed, is Abu Bakr like any one of us? The answer is no. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was a trader. He was a merchant. So he knew that even if he gives everything away, in a couple of days he would be able to make another deal and Allah will give him more and more money. So if we were in the same position, yes, this is permissible for us to give all our money away. But if giving all our money away meant that our children will starve and we would not have money to live a decent life, then this is forbidden. And that is why one, when spending, should be wise. He should not be extravagant in spending and he should also not boast or brag about it. He should have it for the sake of Allah. Allah the Almighty says, and eat and drink, but waste not by extravagance. Certainly Allah likes not the musrifeen, those who waste by extravagance. And also we should avoid doing what we're doing so that people would be happy and praise us. Because spending, being generous, giving away in charity, this is a form of worship. Therefore, we should make it solely and entirely and sincerely for the sake of Allah the Almighty. Allah told us that, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that Allah says, I am the wealthiest from having associates with me. Allah Azza wa does not accept to have any associates with him. Whoever associates others with me, I will abandon him and those whom he associated with me. Therefore, when you spend in the cause of Allah, in means of charity, this has to be, and for his sake, alone the Almighty. The punishment of those who do not comply is indeed severe. The Prophet ﷺ told us that among the three whom Allah would punish on the Day of Judgment, a person who used to be known as the generous, Jawad, and when Allah Azza wa Jal brings him in front of him and shows him his blessings, shows him what he had done for him, the Almighty, then Allah asks him, what have you done in this regard? 
the man says, Oh Allah, I gave my money away for your sake and for your sake alone. Allah then says, You are lying. You did this so that people would say that you are generous and indeed they have said that you are generous. Take him to fire and he would be among the first to be thrown in hellfire. We have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah we will be right back. The patient ones always weep. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. It is one of Allah's names that he is generous. And if you look around you, you will find clear display of Allah's generosity in your entire life. Since you were given birth by your mother till the day a person dies. Allah the Almighty is so generous. But as individuals, as humans, we neglect to see the positive things. We fail to see Allah's generosity overwhelming us in all aspects of life. If you recall, it was defined, generosity was defined as giving when you don't have much and preventing those who ask you from humiliation. So it is essential for a person to be generous, to be giving, but also to prevent humiliation from reaching those who ask you. And unfortunately, this is not the case in some of the times. Allah the Almighty says, O oh, you who believe, do not render in vain your charity by reminders of your generosity or by injury. So you can render, you can even void your generosity and you can become even worse you can become sinful with your generosity when you start to use and to remind those who you give that you had done so and so for them this is one of the major sins it is called in arabic al man it is to show off and to remind someone of your kindness and this is unfortunately quite common among those who do favors who do well who give it charity when they are cornered when they feel that their charity was not in its place so they go to individuals and say didn't I do this and that for you didn't I do you a favor why do you do this and they remind them of the things or the good things they had done and this is a major sin Abu Hanifa, one of the greatest scholars of Islam and the Imam of the school of thought of Hanafi school, it was said that he was a businessman and he had lots of money and he used to lend people money for the sake of Allah, interest free. And it was also said that he used to sit in the shade of a house in the afternoon where it was pleasant, they did not have air conditioners, they did not have fans. So whenever it was pleasant and it was possible to sit in the shade, he would go out of his house and sit in the shade. It was reported that the owner of that house, who was his neighbor, borrowed from him a small amount of money. And from that day, Abu Hanifa stopped sitting in the shade. So the man came to him and said, Imam, you used to sit in the shade of my house. What prevented you from doing this? And he said that I was afraid that sitting in your house now is interest for the money I gave you and I did not want to use you or I did not want you to feel that you're being used. Look at this type of generosity that this scholar, this imam had. And it was also reported by the Salaf that when you do a favor to a person and whenever you see him you say assalamu alaikum as a reminder that you have done this favor do not offer salam to that extent 
A Muslim should be sensitive. Don't do something that hurts your brother. If you lend someone money, if you do him a favor, and every time you meet him, you greet him, or you do something and you feel that he's upset because he is humiliated, then avoid this so that you would not hurt his feelings. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the authentic hadith, there are three whom Allah will not look at or praise on the day of judgment and there will be a painful punishment for them. The one who wears his garment below his ankles, the one who reminds others of his favors and the one who sells his product by means of making false oaths. These are all major sins because Allah Azza wa Jal will not look at them, will not have mercy upon them on the day of judgment and he has prepared punishment for them. The first one, it is a person who prolongs his garment, his trousers, whatever he's wearing below his waist to the extent that it exceeds his ankles. So this one would be punished by Allah. The second one is Al-Mannan and he is the one who reminds others of his favors. So whenever he is sitting with others, he say, I did you this and that. I introduce you to your new job. I lent you money the other day. I made you come out of a problem by solving it or by having some one influence the decision makers and so on. So he keeps on reminding people of his favors. And this, as mentioned earlier, is a major sin. A proper Muslim does not do this. Why? Because he's doing what he's doing for the sake of Allah. And the third one is a person who made Allah, the Almighty, his product in selling and buying. In the sense that he does not sell something or buy something unless he swears and says, by Allah, I bought it for so much and I sold it for so and so. And people would take what he's saying for granted simply because he used the word Allah. He swore by Allah and they believed in that. All of these three people will be punished on the day of judgment. If you're generous, you have to do that for the sake of Allah. And you will live freely and happily. But if you do it for the sake of people, then you have a problem. A lot of the Muslims usually have problems when they do well to others and they are not faced by the same token. So you get people upset with others. Why are you upset? Well, I visit them, I phone them, and they never return my calls and they never return my visits. So why did you visit and call in the first place? Because Allah instructed me to connect with the relatives and the next of kin. So then if you're making it for Allah, you should not expect a reward except from Allah. Likewise, if you're generous, this is for Allah's sake. Expect the reward to come from Allah, not from the others. That's why you should not void your charity by doing this. One of the means that should make us generous is to know and to believe that whatever we have and own is just something deposited with us by Allah Azza wa So the wealth we have is not ours. It's a deposit that Allah may take any time He wishes. It was narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no day on which the people get up, but two angels come down and one of them says, O oh Allah, give in compensation to the one who depends in charity, to the one who spends in charity. And the other one says, O oh Allah, destroy the one who withholds. So whatever you do, it is a deposit that Allah has given you. Two angels supplicate. One says, O oh Allah, give 
and bless and compensate those who spend in charity. The other one says, Oh Allah, destroy the money and the wealth to those who withhold and they do not give away in charity. One would say then, whom should I give in charity for? Whom should I be generous to? To the one who are poor? To the one who needs medicine? Should I dig a well? Should I feed the hungry? Should I clothe those who don't have? What is the best means? A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O Prophet of Allah, I have a dinar. What should I do with it? The Prophet said, ﷺ, spend it on yourself, on your needs. The man said, I have another one. The Prophet said, spend it on your children. He said, I have another one. The Prophet said, spend it on your wife, on your family. The man said, I have another one. The Prophet said, spend it on your servant, those who serve you. Then the man said, I have another one. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, spend it wherever you think is best. In this hadith, we understand that spending what we have, we have to start on spending it on ourselves, on taking care of ourselves, not to go to extravagance by buying designers clothes and so on no but at least don't humiliate yourself and live in poverty try to live a decent life then spend the extra money on your children their education their well-being then spend it on your wife then spend it on those who serve you whether they are working for you or working with you that you are the responsible for supporting them and providing them then you may spend it on whatever you wish such as giving it to the next of kin and to those who are close to you islam recommends to be recommends us to be generous the prophet even goes on to say والسلام, whenever you cook a meal add more water to it so that you can make it bigger and share some of it with your neighbors. To that extent, it is a sin for a Muslim to live and to have a full stomach while his neighbor is hungry. The Prophet tells us, والسلام, do not humiliate or look down. Do not look down at the size of the charity. Even if you were to give a leg of a sheep to your neighbor, what would he do with a leg of a sheep? It's a gift. It is something to be charitable with. It is a sign of your generosity. So we should be giving, we should offer the brothers and the sisters what we can in order for us to be generous and in order for us to qualify to be among those whom Allah Azza wa Jal loves. This is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The patient ones